All right, everybody, I wanted to give you a quick walk through of the shop before I pack it up. This is the original shop we're about to move. I realize I've never done a shop tour in my original shop, and uh, this is a last chance to look at it before it's uh, all gone. So as you can see, basically my shop is my half of the garage and um, it's not a lot of space, but I've done the best I can to make it as efficient as possible. Uh, I am excited to be getting into a newer space that's a lot bigger. Um, I, it's gonna take a little while to get it all put together, but I think in the end, it'll be a pretty awesome space. Let's just do a quick walk around. Over here, I've got my uh, various small bits and pieces for lure making over here. And then, uh, of course, I've got my drying wheel, my test tank, pegboard with all my tools on it, lead pot. Uh, and then down here, I've got an air compressor. Um, it's a dual purpose. This is not a dedicated lure shop, so uh, I also have my, my regular hose wheel here uh, just for working on my truck and stuff like that. And then over here, the hose, the hose runs all the way around behind that. And then I've got my pressure regulator right here. But this is where I do most of my painting, uh, obviously, you've seen. Along this wall, I've just got various tools, workbench, my vise. It's a pretty small shop, so I do wind up moving these uh, tools quite a bit, depending on what I'm needing to do. Um, I have a shop vac rigged up where vacuums actually up in the attic and I can switch it off and on from my power strip right here. Uh, and then I've got a cyclone collector down here at the bottom to basically catch everything. So nothing actually winds up going up into the attic. That's just where I've got my vacuum set up. And then of course this wall, I've got my uh, retired lures, my personal best. Uh, personal best with lures that I've made, I guess I should say. The old seal lure. But yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it. So this is Zimtex from the old shop signing off for the last time. And next time I see you, uh, I'll be in the new house. Hey everybody. I know it's been a few weeks since I've been able to record anything. So I wanted to give you just kind of a little update of what's going on over here. We did manage to move out of the old house and we're in the process of moving into the new house, but a lot of my stuff is still packed away in storage, uh, which makes it difficult to find things. I don't even have my microphone for this, so I'm sorry if the audio quality is terrible. We'll just have to work through some of these issues as time goes on. And here in a minute, I'll show you uh, kind of what I've got to work with right now. But it occurred to me that it might be a good idea to make a lure with just hand tools. Maybe I'll make one without using any electricity or any power tools. Because I know there's a lot of people out there that maybe are interested in lure making, but they don't want to invest in all of the bigger equipment that you kind of accumulate over time to make your job easier because I know you can make them with just hand tools. And I think that might be a good thing for people to see. And it might even be a good thing for me, kind of a good exercise. Unfortunately, this is going to be a fairly long process because while I do have a space uh, for making lures, it's gonna take a while for me to actually build the shop that I have envisioned in my mind. I want it to be a really cool shop, uh, but you can join along with me as we do that. And eventually we'll get where we need to be. That's enough of me talking. Let's go see what I've got and uh, we'll kind of go through that and then we'll come up with a game plan for making a new lure. So this represents everything I have found so far out of storage. Now I did bring this workbench, which you can see from the original shop. Um, I did add some casters here on the bottom so that I can move this thing around as construction goes on in the new shop. Uh, but let's kind of look at what I've got here. You can see I've got a small vise. That's going to be pretty handy. Um, in here, I do have a tub with a lot of my woodworking stuff. I've got saw, sandpaper. Uh, I do have some bits. I do have my drill. And then I've got my little aquarium here for ballasting and getting the balance just right. 
And then I do have this stack of trays, which has a lot of the little stuff that you need for lure making. And then of course I've got the air compressor only because it is attached to the workbench. I do not have all of my airbrushing stuff just yet. It is locked away somewhere. But I do have quite a few uh, finishing things in here. I've got my wire benders and my split ring pliers. I've got, you know, some glues, baking soda, uh, painting brushes. These are actually for clear coating. And then a lot of my glues. So that is all I have so far. I did get this awesome sketchbook that I've been uh, doing a few things in lately. It's really been helping me get through this period of time where I can't make lures. But if you follow me on Instagram, you'll know that uh, I've been posting a few of these ideas that I've had lately. And uh, I'm going to continue to work in this book and come up with some, some cool stuff. Future projects, things like that. Here's an idea for a... Uh, crawfish lure that I've got. Anyway, I just wanted to share that with y'all. It's been a really handy tool for me, a good creative outlet while I've uh, been unable to make anything. So I think we've got enough tools to make something. Let's get started on a sketch and see what we can come up with. So I found myself a scrap block of wood that I'm wanting to use for this project. Um, and it looks like it's pretty good on width, but unfortunately it's a little bit short for the sketch I did. And that's not a big deal. We'll just uh, modify this a little bit to fit this block of wood. This is just your standard walk the dog setup, five inch long, uh, attachment point in the front, hook in the back and on the belly, 
And then of course, um, what makes a walk the dog lure work the best is having your weight just past the center line of the center of gravity. So you want it towards the rear, always on the bottom of course, so that it stays upright in the water. But if you put it just back behind the center, uh, it'll give you that zigzag in action in the water. Now, of course, I, I don't have my airbrush and the airbrush would require power for the compressor, so I can't use that. Uh, so what I'm going to use is I'm going to use spray paint to get the main color. And then I did find my airbrush paints, uh, so I may just hand brush those on when the time comes. I may do foil on the gills. I may not. I'm still kind of up in the air on that. But I have decided that I don't want to use any electricity uh, in the making of this lure. That's going to be my goal. That's kind of going to be the challenge of making this lure. And I'm really excited to kind of get into it and get started. So yesterday after I got done shaping this, um, I was looking at it and I decided I wasn't really satisfied with some of the areas on it, the overall shape. Uh, it's a little too square still on the corners, that's why I've marked these off. You can see I've been working on some of the sanding of these 
uh, these edges to get the profile right. I guess the reason I'm pointing that out is you don't have to settle. Um, if you're working along and you're not happy with what's what's happening with it, take the extra time to shape it and get it the way you want it. Because if you keep moving forward, even though you're not happy with it, you're never going to be happy with it. So it's far better to, you know, take some extra time, get it right, uh, and, and be happy with it moving forward. Well, that's all for now. Be sure to check back for the full video on this hand tool lure. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.